Well, good Tuesday morning. Wasn't yesterday awesome? You were just beginning to get to know Bridget Cameron Rittenauer. Bridget is wonderful. She spoke at our women's luncheon in May. And today's she talks about an absolute miracle that happened to her. That she it's it's amazing that she is still alive. So that's going to be part of it. And also kind of her story again of what it's like to be the sister of people who became stars in Hollywood and yet have stayed strong in their faith. Well, this one is an amazing story. I know that it's going to bless your heart as it does mine. And I so respect them for standing up for their faith. And that's a challenge for us to do the same. So God bless. Enjoy today's message. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. I did actually get to start auditioning. And I did a few things. But one of my most favorite auditions was I got to audition for the Los Angeles traveling musical of The Wizard of Oz. And guess what? Munchkins. And I thought, I've got this! I've got this in the bag! I can sing, I can act, I can dance, and I'm 4'11. I fit the height requirement! And I thought, this is it! So I went to this audition, and there were a lot of other um, actors and actresses there that were petite. And we had to learn a song, and we had to learn a dance by the choreographer. So we got into groups. And when we got into the choreography group, um, the choreography, after a couple of times of teaching us this routine, she pulled me out and she said, I'd like you to come with me. And she took me to another corner of the room and taught me a completely different routine than what they were teaching the group over here. And afterwards, she said to me, you are really good. You're very, very good. And I thought, oh my gosh. I just, I'm going to land my dream job. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be traveling and doing all of these things. And a couple weeks later, I got the call from my agent. And she said, Bridget, I'm, I'm sorry they didn't pick you. No. And I said, what do you mean? I said, there has to be a mistake. The choreographer pulled me out, taught me a routine, all this stuff. And she said, Bridget, I know. But they didn't pick you. And after that audition, it makes me tear up because after that audition, it was kind of like I came to the conclusion that I was never going to be on TV. I was never going to be like my siblings. And during that time, just in my sadness and, and, and all of that, um, soon after the, uh, the audition, I met my now husband. We've been married 23 years. And we, uh, there they are. <laughs> and during that time, being married and, and having kids and having, you know, my, my corporate job and all of that, watching my brother and sister's careers, I'll be honest, there was some jealousy. There was some hurt. And we're a very, very close family, my siblings and I, but watching them do the things that I've always wanted to do, I started asking God, why them? Why did they get picked? They didn't even want to do it. <laughs> and ladies, I'll be honest with you. That audition back in Hollywood, Kirk wasn't even that good. <laughs> and I just kept saying, God, why are you not using me? In 2015, my husband and our three kids um, went on a road trip, and we were traveling to, from Palm Springs to Nashville, Tennessee. We were actually going to the Caleb Awards, 
And I traveled, I, I, I road tripped with my family as a child, like all the time. And it was such great memories. So when my brother said, hey Bridge, do you want to come to the Caleb Awards? My husband and I said yes, and we thought, let's road trip. It's going to be so much fun. So we were uh, traveling, and we were actually in Texas at the time. And it was a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. And we were driving through, um, and in the distance, we saw a dirt storm. And now we have dirt storms in Palm Springs. But this dirt storm was different. And when we got into the dirt storm, we got, um, we got into the middle of it, and it literally blacked out our car. We couldn't see. My husband was driving. Everett was in the driver passenger side. I was in the back with my oldest son, and then my daughter, Reese, was in the very back. And we couldn't see anything, so my husband slowed down. He finally came to a stop behind a semi-truck that was stopped with his hazards on. And not more than seconds, my husband looked at me and he said, Bridget, I need to move the car. I'm not feeling comfortable behind this truck. I said, okay. So my husband moved our SUV to the side. Now, this, this highway was two lanes going like this. He moved the car next to the semi-truck. And no more than seconds after we moved, a semi-truck going 75 miles an hour came from behind us, smashed into the truck that we were just behind. The, the cab exploded. And the gentleman inside that cab passed away. My husband said, I gotta get out, I gotta help him. And I said, no. I said, stay in the car. And at that moment, God said, get Reese, get Reese. And I grabbed my daughter and I pulled her into the seat next to me and I buckled her seatbelt in. And no more than seconds after that, another semi truck going full speed came, did not stop hit our car, pushed us down into the ravine, and became embedded between the truck that was on fire and our car. And he jumped out of his cab, and he jumped onto the hood of our car, and we're pounding on the hood. And he said, get out, get out. The cars are on fire. And I got everybody out of the car from the passenger side. And I could hear these voices in the distance saying, come over here, over here. And I told the kids to run to the voices. And we got into this car, and they, they took us a, a little ways down the road. But during all of this, there was so much commotion, so many police officers. I was on the phone with 911. There was so much going on. But during all of that, God kept putting in my visual Jeremiah 29 11, Jeremiah 29 11, over and over and over. And I'll tell you, I was starting to get really annoyed. <laughs> I was like, God, there's so much going on right now, and you're putting this verse in my head, and I can't even tell you what that verse was. So we got taken to a motel for the night, but I knew there was a Bible in the nightstand of that motel. And I burst open the doors, went over to the nightstand, pulled out the Bible, and I opened up the Bible, and that's when God gave me my life verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. God spoke to me, and he said, Bridget, all those years that you watched Kirk and Candace do all these things, I never forgot about you. I never forgot about the gifts and the talents that I gave you. I have plans for you. But you have to trust and wait on my timing. My timing is perfect. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting.